Hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this mainspring winder. Uh, after working on a few clocks, I finally decided that it was time to figure out how to work on the mainsprings. But in order to do that, I needed a mainspring winder. So I looked online and they can cost hundreds of dollars. Um, so I started um, looking at how to make my own. And this is what I came up with. Unfortunately, when I originally made this mainspring winder, I didn't even think about filming that process. Uh, I was just really focused on trying to figure out the mechanics of it and how it should work, um, what parts I would need and where to find those parts. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to take the, the whole mainspring winder apart and explain what each part does and then put it all back together. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how it actually works with a real mainspring. One thing I do want to point out is this mainspring winder currently only works for loop end mainsprings um, because those are the kind of clocks I'm learning how to work on. And uh, so this winder doesn't have a hook installed on it that would work for whole end mainsprings that are typically in barrels. But uh, with that said, I'll go ahead and get into the disassembly of this winder and um, I'll show you how it all works. So the first thing I'm going to take off here is actually a tap wrench uh, that I slightly modified and inserted into this pipe. Um, this tap wrench holds one end of the arbor on the mainspring. This tap wrench did have a handle that went through that hole there on the end and I just hammered that out. The next thing to come off is this pipe flange and this just keeps the handle from sliding back and forth. It kind of locks it into place on the frame there. So that just comes off with an Allen wrench and then the, the whole handle just slides out. So the crank handle is made with three pieces of pipe, a couple elbows, and then there's a cap on the end. Uh, I also decided to add some wooden embellishments on there to kind of make it, one, look a little nicer, and two, have it function a little bit better in my hand. So I turned those on my lathe to kind of fit nicer around these pipes. So one important thing to note here is I did use JB Weld on a couple of these threaded connections. And that is so when I'm winding or unwinding a mainspring, this crank handle doesn't unthread on me and cause a big problem. The next thing to come off is this thumb screw, which locks that aluminum rod into place. And that threads into a threaded insert um, I embedded into the wood there. So this aluminum rod clamps onto one end of the mainspring arbor and I decided to use a countersink bit with my drill to kind of cup the end of that. That way the arbor doesn't slide off as I'm winding or unwinding the mainspring. The next things to come off is actually a handle that's meant for a cabinet or a drawer and the hook is actually meant for a gate or something like that. I just gave them a new function. One thing I decided to do here was to counter bore the holes where the handle meets the frame and this was to try to make a mechanical lock with the frame and the handle. So this aluminum rod functions as a lock for the crank handle and I'm not going to take it off here because I didn't want to risk damaging those cotter pins. 
and those pins just act as a stop for the rod so it doesn't completely separate from the frame. So I'm not going to completely take apart the frame, but I wanted to show you the type of joint that I decided to go with. Um, you could simply just butt these two pieces of wood up together and that might be fine. But I decided to use a rapid joint thinking it might make the frame a little bit stronger. And I just used my table saw to, to cut that out. And there's all the parts for the mainspring winder. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. And uh, now I'll put it all back together. And I do plan to glue up the frame, but my glue bottle dried up on me and I have to get another one. So as I put this mainspring winder back together, I do want to mention that I made this using the tools that I already had in my wood shop. Uh, I used the table saw to make the rabbit joints. I used my router table to round over the edges of the frame. Uh, my miter saw to adjust the length of the wood. Uh, my lathe to make the wood to wrap the, the crank handle. And I used a drill and Forstner bits to drill the holes. Um, you don't have all these tools that's okay uh, I think you could get away with just using a simple saw and a drill um, you also don't need to do exactly what I did I think you can just do what makes sense to you given the tools you have how you want it to look and how much time you want to spend on it basically Another thing I want to make note of is I did drill a hole through the end of this pipe so I could insert this bolt to mechanically lock the, the tap wrench to the pipe. I don't think I tightened that flange enough so that handle is now shifting around so I'll move that back over and tighten it up a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that's a little too tight. Gotta loosen it up a little bit, see if it spins. There we go. And now it spins freely. Now that the mainspring winder is put back together, 
Um, I'll go through and show you the packaging um, that each part came in. Um, and if you can't make out what the packaging says, I also have each part listed in the description with links and prices, um, so you can check it out there as well. This is the threaded insert that I decided to go with for the thumb screw. Uh, you will have to buy a special bit to thread that into the wood. Uh, if this is the direction that you go in as well, um, one thing that's going to make your life a whole lot easier is if you put wax on that breast threaded insert before you try to thread that into the wood. Um, the wax acts as a lubricant and it glides in a little easier that way. This is the aluminum rod that I bought. It was originally three feet long and I just used a little bit of it and I had a lot left over. This is the package that the hook came in. This is uh, from the handle. The thumb screw, I think it was a pack of two. I decided to use an acorn nut for the bolt that connects the tap wrench to the pipe, but obviously you can use whatever nut you want. This is the only flange I could find at the time, and I just cut that one piece off. And the packaging for the cotter pins. And next are the various packages that the, the pipes came in, the elbows and the cap. So now I'm going to go through and measure some key spots on this winder so you can get an idea of the size of it. So the crank handle sticks out about five and a half inches. Overall it's about 14 inches long. And about maybe eight and a half inches tall. About three and a half inches thick. And the space between looks like about nine and a half inches, and the crank handle sticks out about five and a half inches. And that piece is about nine inches long. So now it's time to see this mainspring winder in action. So I've got a mainspring that I've taken out of a clock. Um, one end of the arbor goes into the tap wrench and then that aluminum rod slides and locks into place there. Tighten the thumb screw and now it's locked in place. Take that hook and insert it into the loop on the end of the mainspring. Now I'm going to wind up the mainspring a little bit um, so the zip ties around the mainspring loosen up and I can cut those off. And now you can see how I lock the crank handle in place. And now I can take off these zip ties and then I can completely unwind the mainspring now. Now you just need to unhook the mainspring, loosen the thumb screw, and the uh, mainspring comes off. To uh, wind the mainspring back up, you put it back in and put the hook back into the loop at the end of the mainspring, and then wind it back up. And now I'll add a couple zip ties to hold the spring in place. And there are proper clamps you can get for this. They're called C-clamps. Um, I just don't have any of those.
and there you have it the mainspring is wound back up if you have any questions or comments about this winder just let me know and uh, thanks for watching